Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In today's lesson, it's actually going to be very cool because we're going to finish statistics and then we are finished the curriculum and we can start revision of paper one. Yay, just in time for exams. Hey, OK, so let's get carrying on. So we were talking about the correlation coefficient. This is used to just calculate how close the data fits the best fit line. And R is 1 over n minus 1 times our summation of all of this is the correlation coefficient, where n is the number of data pairs, s of x is the standard deviation of x values, s of y is the standard deviation of the y values. And after saying all of that, very happily, our textbook, cal I mean, our calculator calculates the correlation coefficient. So that's quite cool for us. What's important is to be able to interpret the correlation coefficient. First of all, the correlation coefficient is needs to be between 1 and minus 1. If it is negative 1, it indicates a negative and strong correlation, okay? If it's 0, then it means there's no correlation. And if it's 1, it indicates a positive and strong correlation. In other words, if it's negative 1, then we're saying it's got a straight line, it's got a very good correlation to the data, and it has a negative gradient, where if it's a 1, then it's got a very strong correlation and it's got a positive gradient. So as you can see here, if we've got a correlation of approximately 0.9, you can see it's a beautiful positive correlation. It's got a positive gradient and you can see that it's very close to a straight line. Yeah, this is a negative correlation of approximately minus 0.6. So you can see that actually it has a negative gradient because of the negative and 0.6, it isn't quite as beautifully put as a straight line graph as this is. And here yeah, your correlation is almost, it's 0.1, it's approximately zero. So there's no correlation in the data, no serious lines. Okay, so the best thing to do is do some examples. So we're going to do two, three, four examples. And then if we've got time after that, we're going to do revision of paper one. Yay! Okay, so now the date below shows the number of people visiting a local clinic per day to be vaccinated against measles. Okay, so you need to understand that these questions are all old exam paper questions, exemplar questions for grade 11 maths. Okay, so it's not exactly like I have been just um, making these questions up or printing and copying them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out our calculator. Okay, now everybody's calculator, when I say everybody's calculator is different, you must remember that I am using an HP calculator and I know most of you guys use a Casio and some of you use a Sharp. It doesn't matter which calculator you're using, you still need to be able to use it and you need to know whether to go through, what system to go through. So they're more or less the same. You need to choose mode and in this case you need to use two for stat that's to tell that it, you want it to be statistical. In this case, we're looking for one variable. Okay, so we're looking at one. So we're going to go one. One. Okay, and now we're going to put all the numbers in. So we're going to go five equals 12. 12 equals, and then we're going to go 19. I know this is tedious, and if you're doing this, I'd like you to be doing it together with me or even slightly ahead of me to see if you can get all the answers. So that's 29, then 35. Normally what I would do is if I was doing this and not, um, not in a situation where the calculator would disappear every time I touch the screen, Every time I put a number in here, I would tick it off here to make sure I'm putting all the numbers in. But unfortunately, I can't do that now because watch, if I do 35, the calculator disappears. And seriously, we don't have time for that. So, so I'm just going to have to make sure that I'm very careful. So this is going to be 23 equals 15 equals... 33 equals uh, 37 equals 
uh, 21 equals 26 I'm going to get there, I promise, equals 18 um, equals, uh, sure, um, where are we, 23 equals, I'm sure that your calculator is a lot faster than this, um, 18 again, Um, no, delete, equals, and then 13 equals 21 equals 18 22 equals and 20 equals right and then we press the AC button and we go shift stat and now we need to look at the different things there's type data sum var and court I'm never sure which one to do so I'm going to go look at the data and see if that's what I want nope Okay, so AC, then we go shift. I think it's the var for variables. It is the var for variables. Okay, so now we've got N, okay, which tells you how many elements you have in your set. This is the mean, and that is the standard deviation. This sigma X is the standard deviation, okay. And they've asked for the mean of the data. So we're just gonna press two, and we're gonna get equals, and there you go, 21.5. Four, seven. So the mean of it is 21,47. Now they've said calculate the standard deviation. Okay, right. So the standard deviation, again, we're going to go AC. We're going to go shift, stat, four. And then we're looking for number three, the standard deviation equals 7.8. Okay, so that's 7 comma 8. Now it says determine the number of people vaccinated against measles that lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So what does that mean? That means we're looking for people that are one standard deviation away from the mean. So it means we have to add 7 comma 8 and subtract 7 comma 8 and whatever those numbers are, these are, this is the range that we want to know about, okay? So 21.47 plus 7.8, uh, let's get out our calculator. So to go 21.47 plus, plus, oopsie, delete, um, <laughs> seven point eight equals 29.27 that's 29.27 and then if I just go back and I subtract so let's go delete and I subtract and say equals and that's 13.67 so I need to know how many people are between 13.67 and 29. So anybody who's 14 through to 29 will fit this bracket. So let us look at that. So let's circle there. 14, that's one, 29 fits, 35, 23, uh, 15, 33 doesn't, 37, 21, 26, 18, 21, 18, 23, 18, 22, and 20. Sure, it's a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Till 13 people fit within the standard deviation. Now they say determine the interquartile range, which is kind of mean because that means that we have to get the data in ascending order. 
because we can't use our calculators for that. So let us do that. Um, so we've got to go 5, um, 12, 19. Okay, so it's 12, 13, um, 15, um, 18, 18, 18, Okay, so it's three eighteens, one, two, three, and then a nineteen. Um twenty, twenty-one, Twenty six, twenty nine, twenty six, twenty nine, uh, thirty three, thirty five, and thirty seven. Okay, so there you go. Now they want to know what is the interquartile range. Okay, so they've already worked out for us that the mean was 21.47, which was over, yeah, that's our mean. So if we just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hmm. Okay, fine. That's not quite how we would work out the mean. So I am going to raise that and I'm actually going to work out the mean the way we would do it, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, oh, sorry, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So halfway between 19 is 10. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 would be 21. Okay, so as far as we concerned and the way that we would normally do it, this would be the mean. So if you said 21, they will accept that, okay? Now, the interquartile range, so what we need to first find is the Q1. And Q1 is basically halfway through the first lot of data, okay? So we have now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be Q1. And one, two, three, four, five, that's going to be Q3. So the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which is 26 minus 18, which is 8. Okay, now it says draw a box and whisk a diagram of your data. Okay, fine. So first of all, what you need to be doing is using a ruler. You have to draw a straight line and you have to mark off the values, in this case from 5 through to 37. So you have to mark them off, okay? And you can't make it look like this. You need to be using a ruler. You need to be using a straight line. So it is going to be, um, I'm going to make it a bit easier for myself. I'm going to go 5... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now, please remember that you are supposed to mark off every one of the individual points, obviously, and these are supposed to not just be written randomly. They are supposed to be accurate. I unfortunately cannot use a rule in the software. Okay, so this minimum value is five. Do you agree? So that's five. We have worked out that Q1 is 18, which is halfway between 15 and 20. The mean is 21 or 21.47, but it's over there. The Q3 is 26, which is about over here. Okay, and the maximum value is 37. And then we join these lines. And guys, again, this should be drawn with a ruler, with a ruler and a pencil, and it needs to be nice and accurate. Okay, now it says, 
Identify any outliers in the data set. Substantiate your answer. Okay, I would say five is definitely an outlier for the simple reason that it is very far away from any of the other data and this whisker makes it very long. Where 37 is quite close. I mean, 33, 35, 37. So that's kind of within the range, but definitely five is the outlier there. Right, now let's look at the next question. It says, a group, and I apologize for being also squished, but I kind of really wanted to do this question with you guys, and I wanted it all to be on the same page so that we can work together, okay? So it says, a group of 11 learners were interviewed about using certain application to send SMS messages. Okay, the number of SMS messages M sent by each learner was summarized on Instagram below. So this is the frequency, and this is the number of SMS messages. So it's seven people said that they sent naught to two SMS messages messages. 15 people said that they said between 2 and 4. 36 people sent, said they sent between 8 and 10. And yeah, you've got two people sending, saying that they sent between 2 and 4. So it says complete the cumulative frequency table, okay, which we're going to do now. So 0 to 2 is 7, 2 to 4 is 15, Okay, this is 26, this is 29, this is 36, this is 31, this is 14, and this is 2. That is the frequency for each of those groups, right? Now we need to do the cumulative frequency. So the first bit of the cumulative frequency says the same, it's 7. But now this one is 7 plus the second category, which is 15. So that becomes 20. What is that? 22. Okay, 5 and 7 is 12, yeah. This is 22. Now we need to add the 26, that so becomes 48. Then we need to add 29. 9 and 8 is 17. Carry 1, 4 and 2 is 6, that's 77. Adding the 36, 6 and 7 is 13. Carry 1, that's 113. Adding the 31 is 144. Add in the 14 is 158, and finally up here we've got 160. Okay, so what we're saying here is that 160 learners were asked, okay, about their SMS users. Okay, now it says use the grid provided in the diagram sheet, here it is, okay, to draw an ogive. Okay, so yeah, unfortunately, this writing doesn't actually move with this, so I can't actually just move things now. Okay, so let's draw the ogive cumulative frequency. So it's going to be, so you choose the middle point for each of these. Okay, so from 0 to 2 is 1. So we go 1 is going to be 7, so it's about over here. Now, obviously, mine isn't going to be quite as accurate as yours because of the fact that... Um, Actually, I'm not, I'm not right. You don't choose the middle point. So you choose the upper boundary. I was thinking of a frequency graph. Um, okay, so um, what we're doing is we're choosing the upper number. And obviously, mine's not going to be quite as accurate as yours because this graph is pretty small. So when M is 2, this is 7. So it's about over there. When it's 4, this is 22, which is about over here. When it's 6, this is 48, which is about over here. When it's 8, it is 77. When it's 10, it is 113. 110, 113. Um, 144 for 12. 144, 158 for 14, and 160 for 16. And you always go from zero and you always join the dots. Oh, sorry about the spikes. Let's just try again. <gasps> I raised a link. Ah, okay, fine. So, <laughs> what was this? It was seven. 
22. Um, 22 plus 46 is 48. Sorry, guys. 48 plus 29 is... Okay, where's my calculator? Let's just do this fast. Um, <laughs> sorry. Such a blonde move. Okay, no offense to any blondes that are watching. 48 plus 29 is 77. Um, plus... Uh, 36, I'm just making sure I'm right, plus 36 is 113, plus 31 is equal to 144, yeah, that's right, then it's 158 and 160, right, let's try that again, so it's 2 and 7, sorry, um, 4 and 22, 6 and 48, 8 and 77, 10 and 10 and 113, 113, sure, um, 12 and 144, and that's 158, and that's 160. Right, let's try this again. So now, what you need to do is try and join a best fit curve without doing that whole line sticky 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 thing okay in other words it's fine for it to curve i don't want to see that that is not a best fit line so please don't draw that okay now so there we go so now we've got the cumulative frequency now it says establish the percentage of learners who sent more than 11 messages using this application. So this is the number of SMS messages. So do you see that here is your 11 messages? Okay. So this over here, if I actually see properly, is the number of learners that sent 11. So everything above that is more than 11. So this looks like 121, 122, 123, one, two, three, possibly 124. So this is 124. So everybody above that. So it would be 160 minus 124, which is going to be 36 learners, okay? Out of the 160, times by 100 over 1 is going to give us the fact that we have got definitely, that will give us percentage of learners who sent more than 11 messages. So it's 36 divided by 160. Okay, so that's going to give me 23%. So this is 23%. And then it says in which direction is the data skewed? Well, if you look at this, do you see that if we had to draw this, okay, just more or less, that there's definitely more data fitting in on this side of it than that. So therefore, I would say that the data is definitely skewed to the left. Right, now, let's look at this data. It says the table below shows the weight to the nearest kilogram of each of the 27 part participants in a weight loss program. And very nicely and sweetly for them, they've organized it in numerical order for us. Starting at 56 and ending at 156. Right, it says, calculate the range of the data. So the range of the data is equal to the maximum minus, oh no, I need to be right drawing there. So let me just erase. I've put this line here for when I do the um, box and whisker. So let's see, the max range is equal to the maximum minus the minimum, which is 156 minus 56, which equals 100 kilograms. So that's the range, it's 100. The mode is the piece of data that occurs most often. So if we look here, we've got 271s, um, Okay, let's look. 68, 69, 71, 71, 72, 82, 84, 85, 88, 89, 90, 92, 93, 94, 79, 102, 103, 127. Okay, so it's definitely 71. Now to determine the median of the data. Okay, so we've got 27 participants, which means that the 14th participant is the median in the middle. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14. So therefore the median is going to be 93. Okay, that's the median. Now it says determine the interquartile range. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which means that number 7 is going to be our Q1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is Q1. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wait, that's 4, 5, 6, 7. That is going to be Q3. So therefore, the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which is 127 minus 82, which is going to be 45. Now it says use the number line provided. See, pretty number line. This is what you should be drawing when you use the ruler and the pencil when you're trying to make a number line for your own box and whisker. And this is draw a box and whisker diagram. Remember, 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 you always use a pencil to draw this and a ruler. So the smallest number is 56. So it's 2, 4, 6. There we go. That's opposite 8. Let's try again. Okay, two, four, six. Okay, the Q1 is 82. The median is 80, 93, so it's two, three, somewhere over here. The Q3 is 127, two, four, six, seven. And the maximum is 156. Sure, so we can see the data is definitely skewed to the right. So there's way more data on the right hand side of the median than on the left. Right. Now it says determine the standard deviation of the data. Okay, I'm not doing that again because it took so for a very long time to work out. Okay. But it says the person weighing 127 kilograms states that she weighs more than one standard deviation. Do you agree with her? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do that either because then I'd have to work out the standard deviation. Okay, so let's say the standard deviation, let's pretend the standard deviation was 7.4 kgs. Okay, let's pretend. If that was the case, then do you agree that one standard deviation would be 93 plus 7 comma 4? or 93 minus 7 comma 4. So that's either going to be 100 comma 4 or it's going to be 93 minus 7.4, which is 85.6. And then you go, oh, look, she weighs 127. No, she is not within one standard deviation. Okay, all you have to do is work out the standard deviation and add it to the median, which is 93. Right, now let's do this question, okay, last question for the statistics, it says, the table below shows the weight in grams that each of the participants in the weight loss program last in the total of the first of the four kilogram of the four weeks. So this is the weight last over the four weeks, and this is the frequency. So you can see seven people, wow, last between 3,500 and 4,000 grams in the four weeks. Um, one person lost between four and a half and five, and two people lost between one and 1.5 kgs. It says estimate the average weight loss in grams of the participants over the first four weeks. Okay, so to work out the average weight loss, what you need to do is we need to take the middle point, okay, and then we're going to take the frequency and we're going to multiply it and then add it, okay? So in other words, we're going to take the middle between 1,000 and 1,500 is 1,250. Between 1,500 and 2,000 is 1,750. Between 2,000 and 2,500 is 2,250. Between 2,500 and 3,000 is going to be 2,750. This is 3,250. This is 3,750. This is 4,250. And this is 4,750. And obviously, these are just averages of the brackets, okay? So we're saying, on average, two people got approximately 1,250 grams worth of weight loss. 
three people got approximately 1,750 grams of weight loss, etc., etc. right? So therefore, do you agree that we could say that we could work out the average weight loss by going 2 times 1250, that's the first one, plus 3 times 1750, that's the second one, plus two three times two two five oh just plus just, just, just all divided by 27. so that's exactly what we're going to do so let's get out our calculator so we're going to go two okay let's just make this mode normal um so we're going to go one okay right so we're going to go two multiplied by one two five oh hmm. 1250 bracket plus bracket 3 times uh, 1750 close bracket plus bracket 3 times uh, 2250, 2250, bracket, plus, bracket, and then it's going to be 4 times 2750, 275, O close bracket plus bracket um, five times three two five O five times three two five zero close bracket <gasps> close bracket plus Sorry, I can hear glaciers moving in the background because this computer is so slow. The calculator. Plus 3750 times 7. 3750 times 7. 7. Close bracket. Plus bracket. Um, 4250 times 2. 4, 2, Five O times times two bracket finally plus four seven seven five O no, five O equals And then we divide that by the 27 participants equals press the SD button. And that is our average weight loss. It's 3,009.26 grams. Average age was 3,009.26 grams. Okay, now it says draw an ergive from the data on the, on the set, okay? So let us, the first thing we need to do is put in a cumulative frequency part of the table. So this is gonna be cumulative frequency. So it's gonna be two, five, eight, eight plus four is 12, 12 plus five is 17, 17 plus seven is 24, 24 plus 2 is 26 and 27. So there we go. We've got 2, 5, 8, 12, 17, 24, 26, and 27. Now all we have to do is plot it on this graph. Okay, so I need to erase this. Okay, so obviously this is the cumulative frequency on the right hand side on the, the x axis. You see that we did that over there as well, the number of SMSs. And on Sorry, and the number of SMSs versus the cumulative frequency. So this is the cumulative frequency, and this in this case would be weight loss, the weight loss. 
Okay, so what we are looking at is the upper bracket. So we are saying that two people, first of all, let's do the numbers. So it's 1,500 to 5,000, and it goes up in 500. So it's 1,500, 2,000, 2,000. Okay, now we can make it a bit bigger, I think. 500, 3,000, 3,500. Yeah, we can make it a little bit bigger than that. So let's make it every second block. So this is going to be 1,500, 1, 2, 2,000, 1, 2, 2,500, 2, 3,000, 1, 2, 3, 5, 2, okay, that's not going to work either, because that's a 4, 5, 4, 000, 4 yeah. Okay, we'll just have to stick with the smaller screen up it. So let's stick with the smaller screen up bit, shall we? So it becomes, sorry about that. So it becomes 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, and then 1, 2, 3, 4,500, and then 5,000. And this is the cumulative frequency and it goes from 2 to 27. So that just can be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so 1500 is 2, uh, 2000 is 3, no, it's 5. 2,500 is 8, 3,000 is 12, 3,500 is 17, <coughs> 4,000 is 24, 4,500 is 26, and 5,000 is 27. Okay, so you can see that the curve does the whole funny S shape thing. Okay, now it says the weight loss program guarantees a loss of 800 grams per week. If a person follows the program without cheating, hence determine how many participants had an average weight loss of 800 grams per or more per week over the first four weeks. So do you agree that 800 grams uh, times by four is 3,200? So what we're looking at is how many people got more than 3,200 grams. So if we look over here, this is 3,000, this is 35, 3,200 is over here. And then if we go across, we can see that all of these people, this is the people, all of these people, okay, got more than the weight loss of 800 grams, okay? So this is 17, so we've got 27 minus 17, which is 10. So we can say that 10 of the participants had an average weight loss of 800 grams or more per week over the first four weeks. Right, grade 11s, that's it for today. Please join me again on um, what's today? Wednesday. On Monday, when we will carry on, and we're actually going to be starting on revision of paper one. Yay, yay. Have a good day. Cheers.